Part 2, Chapter 21. It Never Rains on Monday. Thursday, March 28th, 1935. The entire month of February and half of March, it rains. Drizzling rain, driving rain, lightning storms and thunder, big, fat, sloppy drops, little misty ones, and the kind that sting when they come down. It rains every darn stupid day, except baseball day. Monday after Monday dawns bright and clear like some kind of baseball spell. Every Monday, I see Scout and them warming up on my way to the boat. I walk by without even looking. On Alcatraz, there's nothing to do, no one to do it with, and nothing to look forward to either. I haven't even been thinking about Pete all that much. He isn't much of a letter writer, and it doesn't look like I'll be going home anytime soon. Hard to keep up a friendship if you never hear from a person. Annie goes to church with her mom every day. I didn't know it was possible to go to church that much. Piper's off the island, living with her grandma on Knob Hill. Annie says that's because she got in trouble too. But Piper says it's because she's sick to death of us. Mostly I'm glad she's gone. It makes everything easier. I don't even see her much at school now. She's got her own friends, and slowly, day by day, I have mine. Besides, who wants to talk to Piper? Every time I see her, she tells me how much fun she's having living in San Francisco. How irritating is that? My dad gave me back my gloves and my baseball in the middle of February. But with no one to play with, it hasn't done me a whit of good. I tried one day to get some guys to play with me at lunch, but without Scout, they wouldn't. Jimmy was the only one of us who didn't get in trouble. His mom was so busy with the new baby, I guess she forgot. Or maybe she knew him well enough to know it wasn't his idea. I still feel awful about the stuff with my dad. I can't stand that he thinks I let him down. But every time I try to talk to him about it, he says, Water under the bridge, Moose. Let's move on. The only thing that saved me from going completely nuts is bowling. I never thought I'd care about bowling. You roll a ball and knock things over. What kind of sport is that? But apparently, I'm desperate because whenever Teresa's mom doesn't need her to help with baby Rocky, we take Natalie down to the bowling alley in the officers club. It's embarrassing to spend all your time with a seven-year-old girl, but Jimmy is always fiddling with his mechanical devices. So what am I supposed to do? <clears throat> and then there's Natalie. She hasn't had a fit since the day we got in trouble with the warden more than two months ago. Not one. And though I let her have her buttons, or rocks, or, or at the officer's club, her toothpicks, she seems easier and more present. I've met Mrs. Kelly now a couple of times. She's a so short, round ball of a woman with a sturdy build and the hair the color of plumbing pipes. I didn't like the way she looked at me as if she was trying to find something wrong. In fact, I overheard her telling my mom that sometimes there is more than one kid affected in the same family. There's nothing wrong with me, you old coot, I felt like screaming in her ear. I didn't, of course. I'm always polite, but even my mother was upset at this comment. Don't let Moose fool you, she said. He's smarter than he looks. What is it with me that even my own mother thinks I look stupid? Another funny thing is how I is how used to living on an island with a bunch of criminals I am. It would seem strange to live with regular people after this. Even when I saw the convicts unload the laundry from the boats, it was boring. Nothing to say about it, really. I got tired of watching after a minute or two. And then finally, in late March, the weather broke. It got sunny and warm, and there were wildflowers poking up through every crack in the cement. That's when Piper came back to Alcatraz to live, and Annie's mom returned to their twice-a-week church schedule. Here comes trouble, my dad said when he saw Piper back. He's right, too. It's like the last two months haven't happened for her. Her head is full of just as many schemes as it was before. On the way home from school today, she called a meeting on the parade grounds. When Nat and I got there, I could already tell Piper was up to something. What is it? I demanded. I'm not telling until everyone's here. 
Nobody's going to do what you say anymore. You know, nobody wants to get in trouble, I say. Nobody's going to get in trouble. That's what you said the last time. This isn't against the rules. You said that the last time, too. <clears throat> why is that? Why is it I'm responsible for everything? She asks as she waves to Teresa, Jimmy, and Annie to hurry up. I roll my eyes. Sunday, she announces when we're settled in our private spot at the top of the west stairs. We've all got to be on the 9.30 boat to the city and return on the 10. A round trip? Why? I ask. <clears throat> Al Capone's mama is coming to Alcatraz. She's scheduled for the 10 a.m. run from Fort Mason. Piper shakes her head and sighs. How did you survive here without me? How do you know about this? I ask. I have my ways, Piper says. She stuffs a stick of gum in her mouth, then shoves the pack back in her pocket without offering any of us a piece. Which are? I ask. I read Al's mail. I get to read everything, even the small stuff he doesn't get to see. He gets a lot of letters from people asking for money that my mom mails back. Cons are only supposed to get letters from relatives. How come your mom gets to do it? My dad trusts her. Doesn't want Capone's business all over the street, I say. <clears throat> Piper nods. This morning I read a letter from May Capone. That's Al's wife. She looks at me as if I'm the only one who wouldn't know that. She said Al's mom is scheduled to be on the boat March 31, 10 a.m. run. Piper has a big, smug smile on her face. She's waiting for us to tell her how clever she is. Smart, Jimmy says. Piper takes a bow. 31st, 10 a.m. 31st, 10 a.m., Natalie says. But we won't get in trouble for this. She shrugs. We're allowed to take the boat whenever we want. What could we get in trouble for? I try to figure out how this could get us in trouble. I can't come up with anything. Nothing at all. I'm bringing Rocky, Teresa announces. This is going to be history. He has to be there. What's past is always history, stupid, Jimmy says. And you're not bringing Rocky. Mom will never let you. Where I go, he goes, Teresa announces. He's not here now, is he? Hold it, Piper commands, her palm raised high. Jimmy's right. Don't bring the baby. Annie, can you get out of church? Annie shakes her head. I doubt it, she says. Piper looks down. She rolls her tongue around in her mouth. Could if you wanted to. Annie's nostrils flare out. She says nothing. Moose, are you going to bring, you know, Piper dips her head towards Natalie, who is sitting quietly, dragging her fingers along a patch of moss. No offense or anything. Piper flashes her fake smile. But I don't think you should. You know what? That's none of your business, I shoot back. I decide about Natalie, not 